Well, Johnny Boy Eleven decided to go and grace us with yet another goddamn story. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what happens when Johnny Boy Eleven apparently takes on the challenge of Halo and Mass Effect. And that being, of course, Exiles. And, um... Let me just say this right now. It is, once again, another out of the park win. Another home run. Because not only is this, once again, one of those amazing stories, much like, of course, or at least a arc type story, much like Shira, or a few other of his fix that do are in somewhat the same vein as how they start. But it's what would happen if the UNSC basically left during the events of Halo 2 and then came into the Mass Effect universe well before Mass Effect 1, even well before the first Contact War, and then did some crazy shit. One of those being, of course, which, which believe me, I know I want to talk about all this other stuff, but I want to talk about the crazy stuff, okay? Let's get to the crazy stuff, okay? They arrive, they set up, they do some cool things, and then... They make contact with the Quarians. And then the Quarians, they get integrated into them. And then they see Gundam. No, not Gundam Wing. No, not the small chibi Gundams. <laughs> Shut up and take my money. Just take all my money. Oh, not this soon, not this soon. Oh. There we go. Gundam. Ah, oh, 79. The good Gundam, the great Gundam, the awesome Gundam, the Gundam that started it all. Oh. I grew up on this thing on Toonami, OG Toonami back in the 90s. Fuck you! No, that wasn't the craziest goddamn thing about this fic. No, it would also be about the Geth. Because, of course, you can't have the Quarians joining your league without, of course, making peace with the Geth. No, they didn't obliterate them into oblivion, didn't turn Ragnarok into an absolute slag hoop. No. Instead, Instead, they send in their AI to actually make peace with the Geth and literally do one of the funniest goddamn things possible that is going to be so culturally significant that years later they cannot do it, they cannot end a conversation, they cannot end a deal without of course telling those for whom they have talked to, for whom they have negotiated with, for whom they have dealt with, for whom they have made deals with, to live long and prosper. Where are they? I think they're talking about us. No way. Come on, Lewis, let's go. I swear to God. It gets better. 
gets better. I mean, sweet baby Jesus, does it get better? Because not only does a then does he do the Star Trek thing with the Geth, and of course the live long and prosper stuff. No, that Gundam bit I brought up earlier does come into play because apparently there's been a small cultural renaissance in the Quarian people. There's now a pseudo caste system in place. It's not permanent yet. It's not it's still kind of hammering out. But this motherfucker, apparently, way up in faith at a black site. They were building something. Because, of course, much like Japan after Gundam was invented, of course, you would have to be wanting to create a Gundam. <laughs> I swear to God on high, they make a Gundam. It's not a Gundam, it's a mobile suit, but it is a mobile suit. It's a mecha, but it's, it's apparently a combination of many other different mechas. But I'm not going to tell you what that mecha is. All I'm going to tell you right now is that apparently the Quarians have made a mecha. And Tali Zora, uh, her, her basically great, great something grandfather, Apparently is the one who is piloting it, and the dude actually recreated not just the opening of Gundam R79, but also the CG movie that talks about the special weapons division and the invasion of Earth. Because if you read this thing and the way it's described, and you play that invasion bit where the Zaku are literally on Earth fighting, it matters perfectly. And now all I'm thinking. Because the reason that this mobile suit is fighting is because the, Bat the Batarians decided to come invade. Batarians fucked around and found out pretty hard, and they went running with the tails between the legs with hostages. They ain't leaving hostages. Now you think, you think, you know what, no, 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 I'm not even going to bring up the next thing he did. No, 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 or the thing he brought up. No, 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 no. I want you to read this yourself to find out, but I'm going to say this right now. We're in the one-year war. We are at the one-year war, and we are about to see the now very much so influenced by R-79 Zeon. The Earth Federation has polluted our planet for their own greed. We must send them a message, but not composed of words. We have wasted too much time with words. We need action now. The Earth side elite must be taught a strong lesson for their corruption. This is only the beginning of our war. We have been putting more and more money into our efforts towards making our military stronger. Earth Federation has done the same. Many of your fathers and brothers have perished valiantly in the face of a contemptible enemy. We must never forget what the Federation has done to our people. By focusing our anger and sorrow, we are finally in a position where victory is within our grasp. And once again, our nation will flourish. Victory is the greatest tribute we can pay to those who sacrificed their lives for us. Rise! Rise! Take your sorrow and turn it into anger! Xion thirsts for the strength of its people! Whether or not they will become militaristic dictatorship or militaristic authoritarians, I will let you find out uh, down below in the pinned comment. But what I will say, ladies and gentlemen, is that I am looking forward to this. <sighs> because they have mobile suits. And by mobile suits, I mean apparently they have a version of the fucking Zaku. And they are about to go basically bring hell on the Terrans, and they are about to literally bring the effects of the One Year War on them. Because if we learned anything from Gundam, and of course if we learned anything from the UNSC, and if we learned anything from Halo, what am I saying? I'm basically just procrastinating the fact that the Batarians are about to fuck around, find out, and then get invaded, occupied, and then annexed. Much like Xeon did Earth and the Federation. And much like the UNSC when the Covenant came around, except in this case, they're basically going to be the, 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 the liberators, not invaders, not conquerors, the liberators. And they're about to basically bring onto the galactic stage their best foot forward. 
probably not how they wanted to be kind of brought out into the open, but you know what? Batarians decide to fuck around and find out, and this one-year war is about to bring on alliances tested. I'm not joking on that, because again, they're gonna cry to Big Daddy Citadel. Citadel gonna send in the Turians, thinking they can handle this, and they're about to lose a lot of ships, a lot of manpower, and a lot of faith from the people. But, all I can say is, this is amazing. It's got Gundam R79 in it. Go fucking read this. Okay? Go read this. Seriously. Go read it. But, till then, ladies and gentlemen, down in the pinned comment down below, of course, is linked to this lovely, lovely fabric of the exile, the new power exiles. And uh, if you want to help out the channel, check out the links down below because there are, of course, two. There are a few links down there that you might find interesting, from first aid kits to, of course, tracer units that you can actually get, as well as airsoft parts, from our friends over at T238, which make, honestly, really cool trace units. The T238 Spitfire, of course, does gel ball, nerf, and airsoft, while, of course, their Griffin is more akin for just airsoft potential and, of course, applications. So, yeah, if you like that sort of thing, check that out. Or, if you want something that has a bang for your buck, then check out, of course, Braytech. Braytech is an Italian company that makes a 9mm blank adapter for Thunderbees. Thunderbees being the CO2 grenades that we use in Airsoft, but in this case actually uses 9mm blanks, not Makarov blanks, if you know what I mean. No, the other blanks, the PAK blanks, the B-A-K blanks. So, uh, yeah. We're hoping to get that in soon. Review for this should be, hopefully, happening soon. But, ladies and gentlemen, aside from that, as always, I've been Airsoft Al. And if you want to help sponsor a media review, the tier list is down below. Wyatt Earp has already sponsored two more reviews. Two more. And he's done that already from the hundred plus dollar tier. So yeah, after this media review, it's going to be a sponsored review, then the regular one, then another sponsored one, then a regular one, then another sponsored one, or I'll just probably machine gun through all three the, the media review, sponsored media reviews. I don't know yet, but what I will say is that White Earp has basically gone above and beyond the call of duty, and if I had the ability to send him something, I would. I really would. Probably send him a gun. Not, not a real gun, of course. I don't I want the ATF on my ass. No, I'd probably send him an airsoft gun if I could. If I could. But, till then, ladies and gentlemen, as always, I've been Airsoft Al, and I shall tell you lovely, lovely people in the next media review. Once again, pin comment down below. All that good jazz. Till next time. Later.